Many people can tell something is wrong, few people can tell what is wrong, and very few can tell how to improve. In this video, I try to tell you how to improve your football team. What exactly is the problem for most of the teams and players in the lower leagues? Specifically what should be trained and how to improve results quickly. I'm not a professional football player, but I'm someone who is very interested in football itself. I am a programmer and analyst by profession. I deal with very complex cases and analysis methods on a daily basis. In my spare time, I make footage and edit videos for our local football club Rupal Boom. Football is also a complex process with many parameters. Still, I seem to have found a way that some common features can improve any player and bring any team to the next level. Good analytical methods of my profession can yield many results when applied to football. I hate rejecting talent based on computer statistics. Johan Cruyff would have been rejected by Ajax standards. When he was 15, he couldn't kick the ball 15 yards with his left foot and maybe 20 yards with his right. His technical and visual qualities are undetectable by computers or conventional analysis methods. A lot of managers have a good eye for football, but it's not Johan Cruyff's eye. They wanted to build winning teams and take a militaristic approach to his tactics. The Johan Cruyff method wants individuals to think for themselves. I think he's 100% right. Of course, you have to use stats, but also use them smartly and to your advantage. So we can use statistics to develop better game habits and create more and better individuals to think independently in the game. When you see Messi or Johan Cruyff play, you understand. They don't run much. Football is a game you play with your head. In many football clubs, have reasonable quality in their teams but it is going to perform less because, last finishing phases have problems. That's why people pay reasonable sums to certain attackers every year. When we consider how much talent is in their blood and how much can be taught to any footballer to be a super talented striker. Let's think about who a super club striker is and how easy it is to teach an attacker the dignity of a superstar. If we search YouTube to see what these superstars do in their individual training. What did he say about his personal training sessions? What training methods are they focusing on? And take World Cup videos as an example to analyze it. Every superstar has to play for the national team, and it's not always the best team. From all these videos, we can summarize the following. They practice a lot of effective dribble. For final finishing phase you often have to do one dribble and then finish. So dribble has to be very simple and effective, then it succeeds in shall we say in 50 to 75% cases. In this video, I will show a selection. So you don't have to search in dark forest of try very difficult and ineffective dribbles. Dynamic finishing. Many football players have practiced well static finish such as penalty kick. But a lot of goals still happen from own actions and the kick is from a reasonable distance outside the penalty area. Assist equals goal in our case. Because it is done in combination with two players. So, first is dribble. Short statistic about dribble. 1. Lionel Messi, 1,880 take-ons completed, 57.2%. 2. Eden Hazard, 1,220 take-ons completed, 57.1%. 3. Frank Ribery, 939 take-ons completed, 47.9%. See full list on the internet, so you should only be able to pass 50% and make many attempts. Then if we check all 172 goals from World Cup 2022 compilation. Then we could see following statistics. Finishing statistics by types. With two players giving from flanks and suddenly finishing with foot 77 times. Solo action from outside or inside penalty area in low corner left slash right 44 times. With two players giving from flanks and suddenly finishing with head 31 times. Static penalty, free kick 20 times. 
In this way we are almost certain that attackers should train with two, three, or four players separately. Just like goalkeepers do. They have their own tasks and must be able to perform all these four situations where they must score well. While goalkeepers and defenders need not be present. In many cases, that's hard enough to reproduce these situations and repeat them many times in training per two or three players and if you add defenders then it takes more time and it is difficult. Attackers usually play on the opponent's side and that requires a slightly different way of playing. What defenders never or rarely do, attackers do often. I will now show some exercises for each type of finish. That's not the reference, that's just an idea. You may think creatively and explore much more, but be careful not to complicate things unnecessarily. You have to practice basic and be very simple. The simpler you do, the faster you can perform it, the more chance of success. Big number of repetitions is the key of success, practice makes it perfect. All these drills must be very dynamic from both players, the one who will give and the one who will finish. Solo action and finishing see examples of Ronaldo, Messi, Mbappe. Very low in a corner or right inside is perfect. You should only practice this as much as possible. Strikers like goalkeepers practice separately. So, I have two videos of Messi dribbling and shooting, which I think are the two most important videos every player needs to watch. His technique is very simple and very effective in practice. I'll add a link in the comments as well as this video. These videos have really gone viral. Next we give flanks and 45 degrees. Then what is important, ball must go low, so you can finish with your foot. See exercises in shorts. See also real World Cup videos so you can see how it is performed in reality. What needs to be noted here is that the ball is not hit immediately, but is controlled through a tap or a hard pass, and then one's own action and finishing follow. Also note that drills are played from the left or right side of the box and less from the center, this is very important because more goals are scored from the left or right side according to statistics. The center is usually well defended, so if you attack from the left or right instead of the center, you have more chances. There is less defense. Hang from above from the front or from the sides, so that it is easy to finish with your head at once. Static penalty, free kicks from different positions inside and outside of the box. Save this video and use it as a note. Copy the training method of known attackers. Plus, watch the full video with a compilation of all of this year's goals. In my opinion, this is the most beautiful World Cup I have ever seen in my life. How you can improve it and when you have to do it. Most teams have problem with finishing phase, so you have to work exactly on this finishing to fix them. Theoretically we can divide the field in two sides and play less dribble on own side and more dribble closer we get to the opponent's goal. So to make attention for this technique, attackers have to dribble and finish much more on goal during training. The defenders and midfielders have more games to each other in possession. So separate exercises should be provided for these three groups of players. First group of takers more dribble and working on goal. Second defenders and midfielders working on ball possession. Third goalkeepers in the goal. See exactly what he does and how he positions his body. Because if I put my arm there's concentrate on little things because he does little things that make a big difference. There's really no learning sense. never exhausts the mind. Now, if I hold you like this and I roll you like this, for the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. The beautiful thing about learning is that nobody can take it away from you. Anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. Education is the passport practice, to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. There are five important things for living a successful and fulfilling life. Never stop dreaming, never stop believing, never give up, 
never stop trying, and never stop learning. Tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. Finishing in the inside of the foot. Small details can have a big impact on the results of your finish. Many coaches say players should hit the ball with their toes. But in practice, if you watch videos of the 100 best soccer players, you'll see that they end up with an inside foot. This is similar to the passing technique, but with more power, and the ball is never too low or too high on average. So your own improvement method, watch video being recorded with your game. Take a critical look at it compared to other players and find points that you can improve in your game. Check this information and watch YouTube at low speed. Then try to imitate exactly what is being done on the video with two or three people. Success is in the details. Success is the sum of details. Details matter. It's worth waiting to get it right. If you place the emphasis on getting the little things right and address the everyday problems that come up, you can encourage a culture of attention to detail. Details make perfection, so try this information and also see links in description for more information on each topic separately. Thank for your time I hope this video will help you perform better. I will occasionally publish videos about football if requested in comments. The more people leave comments about their problems and what is right and wrong in their opinion, the more chance there is of next video about football. YouTube is a social media and comments are more than welcome, write something you think is important or you can just say hello if you want. I read everything you write and my answer will be in new video or just directly in comment.